is a um, YouTube girl from Breeding Unicorns that we all know. And she's not only the fashion designer from um, Mademoiselle Impos Mademoiselle Opossum. <laughs> she is so much more. And what else? This is what we are going to find out right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, compliments for this oh. amazing outfit. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I give it back to you. Nice glitter boots and yeah, you're always dressed really colorful. Thank you, thank you. Which yeah. is a rare sight in Berlin. <laughs> yeah, that's so important. That's yeah. so important. I think glitter and sparkle, they are made for the sunlight because then, yeah, the effect is much bigger. And yeah. even when we can't go out to clubs anymore, we have to wear our glitter suits during the day. Yeah, definitely at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fighting for more glitter pajamas yeah exactly exactly yeah cool i think um we are already on the on the same on the same vibe yeah yeah perfect and yeah fashion would you say that fashion is your passion definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's always uh, whatever i do i always come back to fashion and it's uh, yeah still still the biggest um biggest project in my heart and where does it come from i have no idea to be honest i just like expressing myself you know when people always say ah oh, yeah i just want attention and blah blah blah, stupid stuff like this i'm always like no i also dress up at home <laughs> for nobody <laughs> and uh, yeah i think it's a form of art yeah and you can you can skip into so many different roles as well yeah. right and you can always show off your mood. I'm more in a 16-year-old gothic phase right now, or I feel like, um, I don't know, more rainbowish today. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like this. Yeah, and even when you don't feel well, this is what I um, sometimes do. When I don't feel well, I put on my brightest clothes, and yeah. then this is making me feel better. Definitely. Yeah. You always act like the way you dress in a way. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I also met a guy who said whenever I, I don't feel really professional, I feel down or I'm hungover, I put on a white shirt and I feel so much more professional. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, yeah, maybe if it helps, just do it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's cool. That's perfect. <laughs> and how equally do you perceive the fashion world? Is it, a, is, it a, is it a woman dominated scene just because there's so many females in it? no way <laughs> when you look at all the big designers it's mostly uh, males it's always men doing fashion for women which is kind of weird from my perspective so the women in fashion are mostly models or you know the the people who buy it but um yeah i mean you have anna winter who's like the baddest queen of the woke but <laughs> yeah when it comes to designers it's still difficult like with artists people creating art it's also men who do it and who get paid more and stuff like this and it's the same in fashion and do you have an answer what we could do to empower more women in the fashion industry buy from them don't go to H&M don't go to Primark or if you if you do it that's fine but maybe every 10th piece you buy buy it from a small designer that might be a transgender person or a woman or a, a woman or I don't know someone around your corner and is there something empowering that you can recommend to young upcoming female designers or female fashion industry professionals fight 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 <laughs> don't give up when I started out it was so exhausting I had three different jobs I didn't earn any money it was such a designer start shit show seriously <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but you have to fight. And if it's really your dream to create something people wear on the streets, um, and yeah, just don't feel, don't feel down. Don't feel you are not worth it. Keep your prices. When you feel this piece is worth 400 euro, then stick to it. Someday someone will come and pay 400 euro for it because they instantly fall in love and know your worth, get creative. And connect with creative people, connect with other women who, who support you and uh, yeah, share the same dream. Did you have kind of a mentor 
our support um, from, I don't know, family, friends, other fashion professionals? Um, I have a lot of uh, super cool friends who were always like supporting me, helping with fashion shows. Up to this day, I don't hire super professional models models. I always look around um, for friends or people on the streets, um, people in different sizes and shapes. Um, I also had a um, older woman, she was 72 for one fashion show because I thought it would be really cool. And she slayed on the runway. The whole crowd was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it was super cool. And um, yeah, also the plus size um, girls also super cool and um, I like this whole body positivity empowerment that's going on. That's why we all also have large sizes. But um, in your fashion collection every piece is, um, is a unique handmade piece, right? Um, when we have the collections it's always handmade single stuff but uh, we also have like stock in the shop or in the online shop you can order and these are also made by hand but you can pre-order or just say, hey, can I get this in pink with glitter? <laughs> and then we can do it. <laughs> ah, cool, cool. And another very empowering fact that I like so much about you are all these DIY stuff because <laughs> like this, you're also empowering everyone to do it by themselves and also the ones who are not as talented maybe as yeah. you or don't have the time <laughs> or whatever, you give them the possibility to buy it. Yeah, how did you come up with all this DIY stuff? Um, I started this YouTube channel and I was thinking about, okay, I have to produce content every week, for e kind of forever. <laughs> and I thought, okay, what is the topic I can talk about for ages and keep on the content without getting bored myself? And I thought, okay, inspiring people would be nice and um, taking them on a journey with crafting and teaching them how to do stuff and yeah that's just what happened <laughs> <laughs> and and this is what brought you also um to be a moderator and to be also hosting mtv yes as you know our equality talk is always going to be also about equality in music mm -hmm. and how did you perceive this and with all the interviews that you did the equality factor of the german music scene <laughs> super super weird for me to be honest, because um, MTV is mainstream, or at least German MTV was really mainstream. We had all these German hip hop guys who were constantly talking about their bitches and stupid shit like this. And uh, whenever I asked them, would you talk like this to your mom? They would always say no. <laughs> so why you are talking about other women like this? And um, yeah. I think it's it's also a, a music industry problem, especially in Germany, that women are only doing singer-songwriter stuff or yeah, dancing in the background. It's not uh, being on the front, being loud and being, yeah, also being a rock star or acting like Cardi B. This is my ass. These are my tits. I'm getting undressed, not for you. For myself, because look at them, they are fucking nice. And <laughs> that's what it's about. And this kind of spirit is kind of rare in Germany. And I'm really looking forward to uh, see more strong girls in the next generation. I mean, if you look at um, girls, you know, this one band, what was it called? Sixten? They were kind of outgoing. Not my kind of music, not my kind of style, but I still support in a way. Yeah, totally, totally. And I think there are... A lot of young, especially in rap music, females yeah. coming and yeah, we have to support and empower them. Yeah, get it, girls. <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> um, but what about the equality factor of kawaii? Because when I looked up, looked it up, what, um, what is kawaii all about? Kawaii originally means the Japanese expression for lovable, sweet, cute, childlike, or attractive. So very stereotypic. Um, attributes and yeah how is the equality factor actually when it comes to j fashion and kawaii fashion and this whole movement um, it's way ahead of other subcultures because gender was always fluid when it comes to kawaii so are you female are you male are you in the middle are you an alien from outer space without any gender it never matters 
to these people. Whenever I looked on the streets in Japan, guys wearing skirts, putting on glitter, whatever, it was never a thing. So, um, but is it really that you see that these people are very present on the streets of Japan? Um, no, it's the super subculture. So sometimes on the weekend, uh, when you go to a certain district, it's called Harajuku here. <laughs> um, you can, you can see them on the streets, but most of the stuff is happening on Instagram. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the Kawaii scene is also very open to LGBTIQ+. Yeah, definitely. It's super, super open and everyone's welcome. And I think it's because you're already a, a misfit of society. Even though you look cute, you are still outstanding. And uh, I also had this hardcore gothic face when I was around 16. I shaved my head and wearing, we're wearing black and leather and shit. But people are used to seeing punks and gothic people on the street. But people are not used to seeing pastel fairy glittering through the streets. So they are still estranged in a way. Ah, so it's, it's kind of the glitter punks of the world. Yeah, definitely. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, um, yeah, I always say kawaii or die. <laughs> and yeah, it's also a form of, um, my form of feminism and fighting because I had a lot of dis discussions with feminism saying, yeah, you can't design cute, frilly princess dresses and, um, and pushing feminism. And I said, that's what it's all about. I can still look like the cutest Disney princess ever riding on my unicorn and kick your ass. That's what it's about. <laughs> Doing whatever you like. Yeah, totally, totally. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's so true. That's yeah. So, true. <laughs> so we don't have to shave our heads and uh, show off armpit hair. Everyone is fighting in their own way. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the most beautiful way of empowering that everyone can live freely. Freely, yeah, yeah. freedom, <laughs> freedom and equality. I read that your inspiration also for all this um, Jap Japanese culture came from your childhood when you watched a lot of Sailor Moon. Yeah. So I wanted to know how equally do you perceive Sailor Moon? Ah. Yeah, for me, this was my first encounter with like sisterhood and not competing with other girls, but supporting in a way. And uh, whenever you look at like Disney movies, except from Frozen, because when I was small, there was no Frozen. <laughs> um, it was always a girl looking for a prince or girls fighting with each other, like in Cinderella and stuff like this. But I watched Sailor Moon and these girls were so strong and they were not only pretty, they were smart, they were fighting, they were fierce. And I was so captured by these images because it was also colorful and fun. These girls had, they were always having so much fun and yeah, um, fighting by moonlight and <laughs> yeah, it was all super cool. And I think until this day, it aged really good. You can still look at all the episodes and they are still fun. And do you sometimes do that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still love Sailor Moon and I still buy merchandise. I still read the books and yeah, it's still a big inspiration. And, um, I think the Western perspective on sisterhood can definitely learn something from Sailor Moon. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I was watching Mila Superstar when I was a child. Yeah, yeah she was also kind of strong. Yeah, yeah, with a um, sport yeah. perspective. Volleyball and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, good childhood memories. Oh. One other um, fact of your childhood is your Kung Fu career, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up in a martial arts school and my dad's uh, a martial arts trainer. Um, I mean, my last name is Lee. What else should you do? <laughs> What's his last name? And yeah, um, they, he always was like, when, when you don't feel treated well, fight for it and never, never really start a fight off, but don't take shit. And that's how I was raised. And this is what I try to give back to my community and teach these girls nowadays. Don't take shit. Just. Just stand for yourself. I know it's hard sometimes. And um, 
it doesn't make your life easier in a way, but it will definitely make yourself more happy. Mm -hmm. And your dad is Chinese, right? Yes. And your mom is from Berlin? Yes. And and how did they, like, um, you already told me that they, like, um, taught you this um, empowering facts of life. But how is it generally in, in Kung Fu? Is it a very equal sport that males as well as uh, or females as well as males can can um can do are they also competing against each other uh -huh. or is there like male and female classes i i've never seen a mixed um mixed competition because the physical condition is different and um But I mean, in, in mixed martial arts, I'm sure there are girls and boys competing, women and men. Um, but of course the training is mixed. So if you go to the martial arts school from my dad, <laughs> you, you will definitely have to have free fight training with guys and girls. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Yeah. Fun fact. The only sport at the Olympics that is mixed with males and females is riding, horse riding. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm a, a horse rider myself, so I know, I know this. <laughs> and you competed <laughs> in the Olympic Games? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, totally. And another thing you're into, because that's what I love so much about it. You're so <laughs> diverse <laughs> in all the aspects. And yeah, another aspect is the gaming aspect, right? Yes. You're also a gamer girl. Yeah, actually, I'm, I may look like this, but I'm a 50-year-old perverted nerd <laughs> in this body. <laughs> so <laughs> my friends always say, we are 100% sure if you were a male, you would still be a virgin because I'm mostly at home watching at anime girls and gaming in front of my PC. <laughs> yeah, gaming is... Um, How much time do you spend gaming every day? Do I have to say this out loud? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I have to work or when I have free time. <laughs> so when, when I have free time, I would say around eight hours. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, the whole day. It's a whole working day. Wow. But this year is the year of the nerds because finally it's a good thing to be in front of your PC and say goodbye to society and just stay at home. And everyone's like, well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least we hear a good side of the pandemic. Thank yeah. you, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, that's quarantine. I'm like, that's what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's cool. But, um, how is it, um, how is the equality factor of the gaming scene? I'm still I, super fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to lie. It's getting better. It's definitely getting better. But um, if you look at all the esports tournaments, it's mostly guys who do it. And uh, as a gamer girl, you always have to give 110%. There will always be some guys who say, oh, her, her headshot aim is bad, even though it isn't just because she's a girl. Or if you go into a voice chat and you don't play with your friends, they're like, oh, go make me a sandwich and stuff like you will hear so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously but do you give them counter or how do you handle of course this? okay i would like your mom can go make me a sandwich because she should teach you how to play first <laughs> oh okay <laughs> no it's um yeah i always fight back but i mostly play with my friends and, okay yeah and what kind of games do you play all kind of games uh of course shooters with my friends because it's fun and competitive gaming but i also do really more chill stuff like Animal Crossing, which might be famous and some people knew in the in the chat. And um, yesterday, because I fully said goodbye for the next three months from society, I started playing World of Warcraft again. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's fun and um, it's a nice way to spend time with your friends, even though you are not in the same room. Are you also in a gaming collective? Uh, no, no. No, but I uh, sometimes stream on Twitch and um, yeah, that's also fun. Cool. <laughs> and I think I can go on talking to you forever <laughs> about all these, um, about all these very, um, very interesting parts. 
And one thing I was also recognizing on your homepage were the diversity of video content that you are producing. Also in a very creative way, <laughs> all the, <laughs> all the, um, what I really liked was the, um, the video where you mixed, um, surviving and, um, and, um, fashion and, and cooking. I know it was surviving and cooking. Ah. And, um, <laughs> and, and splatter. And where, where does this come from? Is it also kind of inspired from the, from the gaming part or? Yeah. I also like trashy, trashy horror movies and, uh, zombies, vampires, weird art house, Japanese horror from the eighties. And I think this whole apocalypse setting was so interesting to me. I mean, it's not anymore because it's happening <laughs> and it's not as much fun as I thought. <laughs> um, but you're still having the best part in staying at home playing your video games. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I just think about all these apocalypse scenarios and how would people deal with it? Will the world really fall apart or will humans be able to get over it? And, uh, I mean, look outside, we are still trying to get over it, but there are still so much super crazy people that are not even able to wear their mask. I mean, and not able to wear the mask correctly. Yeah. And correctly. And when this whole mask thing came up, the whole Japanese community and, uh, especially in, in Germany was like, finally, we can wear them outside and it's not weird. <laughs> And all people were like, oh my God, where do we get the mask? And all the kawaii fashion people were like, I have 10 <laughs> already <laughs> with cute cat faces or glitter or whatever. And yeah, so I spent so much time in Japan and um, I think which even after this pandemic, it would be a good thing to wear a mask when you are sick or just regularly in winter in the train. Mm -hmm. It helps people so much. I haven't been sick for the last year. Because you're always wearing a mask whenever you feel it's... Yeah, and also uh, because everyone else is wearing a mask. Ah, of, co of course, of course. And people washing their heads. <laughs> <laughs> but these are all things that are that were already um, normal in, in, Japan. In, in Japan. Yeah, for years. For, I don't know, 20, 30 years or even more. Yeah. And they still, they, they are still alive. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe it would be a good thing to just keep it. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. So yeah, all these, um, all these zombie things are maybe from a, yeah, from a longing for a world where you can take more action, especially as a girl. Did you, um, did you go on any festivals or concerts this summer with all the new restrictions? No, no. Um, my last concert was in January. Ah. For baby metal. <laughs> this was so much fun. And, um, no, I've seen a, a few things, um, online. Uh, Potter Robinson, for example, did this super cool, um, yeah, online thing. But I didn't go to any festival because I thought, um, I should leave this to people who are really longing mm. for social interacting and, um, for loud music and dancing and, yeah, as I already said, I'm super chill with staying at home and staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Lisa, thank you so much. I think I, yeah, I also with you, the time was flying. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much for showing us so many different aspects and so many different equality factors. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And maybe we can also promote a little bit mm. our um, upcoming, um, yeah. Or is it too early? No. To, okay. <laughs> Spill yeah. the beans. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because as you might know, we at Music is for Passion, we are doing every month a little a focus. And together with Melissa, we are going to focus on Japanese music. And this is how we are going to start the next year. Yay. So everyone can already be very much looking forward to it. Yes, and I think all the links are in the description. Yes. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, follow on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa.